Someday I'm going to be in his heaven. And I'm going to sit at his table. And I'm not worthy to be in that house. But he showed mercy to me. David showed mercy to Mephibosheth, the son of the grandson or son of Saul. Hallelujah. Dwelling in a place of no pasture, Lodi Bar. Mephibosheth. Man, surely you know Saul was trying to kill David. Surely David's going to wipe out the whole family. Mephibosheth is going to go into the presence of the king. He's found in Lodibar, the place of no pasture. David looks at his servants around him. And he says, is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I can show him? Show him the mercy of God. The mercy of God. Loving kindness. Hesed. They said, yes, David, there's Mephibosheth. She, he was dropped as a baby. Mishandled by the one that should care for him the most. The nurse dropped him. He fell. He's crippled. Just like the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. Go and get him because I want to show him the mercy of God. Mephibosheth goes into the presence of the king. He falls before the king. Surely the king is going to kill him because he's a descendant of Saul. And David said, no. He said, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to show you the mercy of God. I'm going to show you what God is like. He said, Mephibosheth, I'm a, like a dog, king. I'm a dog. The king shows him the mercy of God. Sets him at his table. Feeds him his bread. The king's bread. Feeds it him at, at his table. From that day forward. His legs are underneath the table. So you can't see his crippled condition. He's covered. His fallenness is covered. And he ate at the king's table from that day forward. That's exactly what Jesus did for you. You were crippled by the fall of Adam. He took you in and showed you mercy and set you at his table with your lameness covered that he might feed you all the days of your life. When I stand before him, I'm going to feel like Mephibosheth, a man with no pasture. I'm going to say, God, I deserve to be slain like a dog. But my king says, no, come and sit at my table. In my house, in my palace. Say praise the Lord. See, that's what's in this cry of this woman. Have mercy upon me, son of David. Remember how David handled situations in life. Oh, brothers and sisters, I don't want this to be a head knowledge. I don't want to just preach to you from my head today. I want to preach to you from my heart. I want that kind of spirit inside of me, brothers and sisters. Give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The disciples came beside him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He made that clear. He said, The table is for Israel. The meal is for Israel. I happen to believe, I just feel in my spirit that she had contemplated that response from him. That he might say something like that to her. Because she was so quick in responding to that. She goes on and she says this. Then came she and worshipped him saying, Lord help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. 
And I understand the Greek word means a pet dog that would be in the table, that would be around the tables of the, of the home. I get that. But I want you to understand that when he said that, when he called her basically, when the wording is, it's not meat to take the children's bed and cast it to the dogs. The implication was very clear as to who she was. So whether you want to tone it down and make it the household pet or not, the insult is still the same. You know what I'm saying? So today, it's very similar today, the, the tone. If you, somebody called you a dog, same thing then. It's a, a horrible insult upon her. But she didn't let anything stop her. She didn't let him not speaking to her to begin with. And then the insult of the disciples to send her away. And then his implication that she is a dog. An insult, brothers and sisters, would not stop her. All the obstacles of her faith that were in front of her, she refused to let them stop her. Give God praise in the house. She said, no doubt she had thought about it, I believe. Truth, Lord. Truth, it's true. It's true, I'm a dog. I've been called that. It's true. Hallelujah, I don't deserve the meal that you prepared for the children, that's true. I'm not in covenant. I have no promise, no right to the promises of God. It's true. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She said, I don't need the whole meal. I don't need the children's meal. I just need a crumb. Devil possession for her. All it needed was a crumb from the master's table. Just a don't. You don't need a meal to cast out a devil. She had that kind of faith. I don't need a meal for you to cast out that devil. Just give me a crumb. A crumb is enough to get rid of the devil out of my daughter. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Give me the piece of bread that they would use to clean their hands with. Throw out to the dogs underneath the table. Or throw out in the alley for the dogs to eat. Just give me a crumb that you wash, or that you clean your hands with. That's all I need. The devil's not a big deal, she said. All I need is a crumb. Just a crumb from God can handle the devil. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You give the meal to the children. Go ahead. But I just need a crumb. What faith she had. Give the Lord praise in the house. Just a crumb. Look at your name and say just a crumb. Just a crumb. Now, but see brothers and sisters. I'm preaching to the children. You don't just have crumbs. He didn't give you a crumb. He gave you the meal. And if he'll do that for her, what will he do for his children? What will he do for you, man? Say, praise God, brothers and sisters. Won't you just lift your hands and love your king, your God. The king that granted her, her request is here today. Hallelujah. He gave you the whole table. <coughs> Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. That's what changed everything, her faith. She didn't even deserve it. She reached into another dispensation. Woo! She reached beyond. Where Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel in that time. She reached it all the way into the future of the church age by faith. And got a hold of a miracle for a Gentile. 
and pulled it back, pulled it back into her day. That's the kind of faith, great faith, that reaches into the future and pulls it back into time. I'm looking at Gentiles today. He didn't just give you a crumb. You're in the age where he saved the Gentiles. Gave, give you the table. Great is thy faith. He said that two, maybe three times, depending on how you look at the scripture. And every time he said it, brothers and sisters, he said it to a non-Jew. If you've got two centurions that said it, if there's different events, or one centurion, he said, this man's faith is great. You divide it up into accounts. But anyway, a maximum of three times. Great is thy faith. Jesus said that three times. And every time, he was to a Gentile. Whew, great is thy faith. I preach to some people here today who have great faith. I'm not making that up. Great faith. You're following in our footsteps. Man, I'm amazed at some of you. I think about you a lot. I do. I think about you a lot. Situations some of y'all are living in and, and, and some of the situations y'all came out of. And you're a miracle of the grace and mercy of God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And the Lord would just stand. The Lord says to you today. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. God did not leave her in despair. God did not leave her. In darkness. God, hallelujah. Would you lift your hands and worship Him today? Precious God, precious God, precious God. Precious God, precious God, precious God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. G, G, long time ago what you went through you remember, but God gave you your sons, amen, I thank God for that, hallelujah to the Lamb, you know God heard your prayer, God heard your cry over your children a long time ago, you know, and they're with you today. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Would you just love God today? Yeah, I know. I know I get it. Some, some of us don't feel worthy this morning. I, I, I get that. I understand that. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, let, let, let me say this to you, and I think you'll understand what I mean. Sometimes we feel we're so focused on being correct that we miss Messiah. Whoo. Oh, thank you, Lord. We love you today. We thank you for showing mercy to us, God, this morning. Thank you for moving in this place this morning. Hallelujah. God, there's nobody like you. There's no God like you, Lord. I would not want to live any other way than I'm living today. There are people that might look at the holiness of life that we live and the way that we live and, and declare that that's bondage. But Lord, I thank God for the way. I thank God for this way. I thank God for this truth. Because I know it set me free. And I preach to people, God, I've seen their lives changed. Hallelujah. 
Would you lift your hands? I'm going to pray over you right now. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. You've heard the cries today of your people. On the behalf of others. Mighty King of kings and Lord of lords, you'll not leave them in despair. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Would you just lift your voice in praise to the King of kings. Oh, the King, the King, the King is, is granting your petition. The King is granting your petition. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, uh, there are times when God comes corrective, you know, when he comes sort of uh, standoffish and whatnot. But when that person gets their spirit right and, and they are recognizing their need and they come with the right heart, right spirit, right attitude, you know, toward God, persistent with faith. Brothers and sisters, I've never seen God turn them away. Never have. As your pastor, the spirit of Jesus that's in me gets excited. I'm thankful. I really am. People come, you know, my mess up or whatever. Hallelujah. But I believe that Jesus looks through my eyes at you with love. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Because I, I'm just, I'm going to be honest with you, tell you the way it is. None of us are always what we should be. And we all need mercy every morning. Hallelujah. Let's lift our heads and thank God for mercy this morning. Woo! God, hallelujah today, Jesus. I know he's been merciful to me. I know he's been merciful to you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, praise God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, a lot of times you get in situations, Lord, I promise you, I'll never do this again, Father. I'll never do this again, God. I'll never do this again, you know. You need to stop talking like that. You just need to say, Lord, I need your help today. I need your mercy today. I want to need your help tomorrow. I need your mercy tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you, Lord, you know, because I, I may break that promise. And so, Lord, I'm just going to come to you every day until eventually I overcome. Till eventually I overcome. Hallelujah. Till eventually I'm walking in victory. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. If God would do that for her, what he'd do for you and what he has done for you. May the Lord bless you real good is my prayer. Amen. Go to somebody as you're dismissed. Shake their hand. Tell them how much you love them. Appreciate them. For being in the family of God. In Jesus name. You are dismissed in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen.